Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and I am delighted again today to have uh, another wonderful, amazing guest in the channel, uh, Sam J P. Sir, welcome to Exotic Astrology. This is the first time we are recording. <laughs> first time we're doing it, huh, Baba <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you for having me. I, I've seen your channel uh, grow very quickly. Actually, I was like. I don't know when it was, maybe a few months ago. I don't know, maybe it was six months ago or something. It's like I saw you had maybe 5,000 people or something, you know, followers, and then look back a couple months later, it's like 10,000, like 15,000. Like, man, this guy's going. He's blowing it up. So you're doing great work, Babajit. And um, uh, it's thank, an honor. Thank you very much. It's an yeah. honor to be here with you. Yeah, and in fact, I was sharing that uh, I've been seeing uh, your videos from around January 2016, I would say. <laughs> well, I started on YouTube in 2007. My, my yeah. first video was 2007. I'm quite late then to watch. <laughs> yeah, go back and watch those. <laughs> yeah. 2000, the original gangster, that's what some call me. <laughs> oh, okay. The OG. Okay, now, okay. I've been doing it a long time, but congratulations to you and for really putting out some great um you know content and helping people yeah, thank you very much and great to see your work and the books uh, which are behind <laughs> i can see that. <laughs> what are those two books uh, one is yoga and vedic astrology and the other one which you wrote in 2000 yeah, yoga, these are my two books yeah these are my two books yoga and vedic astrology um this was published in, in early 2016 and of course it's on yoga and vedic astrology my background um I actually started doing meditation, it, pretty intensive meditation, when I was about 20, which was 1983. I'm old. And um, so I started doing a lot of intensive meditation way, way back. Um, but at that time, it was really hard to do astrology and whatnot. You know, the world was very different. But I started doing all the Indian practices. And so the, um, which includes the meditation, the study of the text and, and really understanding all of those Vedic things. And then later I got into yoga and practicing yoga and study and I became a certified yoga teacher. I, I'm a yoga teacher. Uh, I certified in 2001. Um, and so then at that same time is when I got really, really serious about Jyotish and Vedic astrology. And But my knowledge of Vedic astrology was placed on top of like 20 years of doing meditation and studying all the other stuff. It's not like I started learning astrology and then had to figure all the other stuff out, all the Indian stuff and the Vedic stuff I had already been doing for about 20 years. Um, when I started and I'd been, and I'd been studying astrology as well, but then I got really into it in the early 2000s. And that led to this book. This book was published in 2004 um, I started writing it in 2003, and then 2004, 2005. Actually, I don't remember. Maybe it was 2005. It was published. So this one is this one literally standardizes and codifies those qualities of yoga, the yogic qualities, and then applies it to Vedic astrology. There's actually two sections on on uh, the Bhagavad Gita and the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Literally, the first hundred pages are all about gunas, elements, chakras, koshas, meditation, things that are all of the Vedic context. The Bhagavad Gita, the Yoga yes. Sutra, Patanjali, Karma, all of, all of these concepts that are that <laughs> people just kind of short circuit and go, yeah. well, tell me about my marriage, and they don't have any context. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that's how I think astrology should also be learned, and that is how it was taught, you know. In the ancient traditions this is what I know and this is and I've seen I mean you, you can give the best of the best predictions but if you do not know the basics then at the end you can't help anybody it's just that you are giving some dates which anyways the person will come to know one day even if you don't say that yeah and this is always the way I've taught this is the way I've, I've this way I learned it and I understand even today um, before we started um, you know, I told you I was going to be talking about some real context because we're going to be talking about transits and the sky, maybe things like the Gandantas and the retrogrades and all of that, that sort of living sky is what I call it. But we don't have any context. We don't even really know what, 
what astrology is doing to us or or how the sky is even really laid out. We don't even really kind of understand it very well. And um, definitely as it relates to um, what we're doing with Vedic astrology, how it actually works, why it why it's working at all, is is a mystery to most people. It's just some. And so what happens is, if we understand something correctly, then we really understand it, and it's not just something that we believe in. And so many students even just believe in astrology, and it's okay. It's better than not believing in it. It's better than thinking it's, you know, worthless. But not much better, because if it just becomes a sort of belief or a sort of kind of religion, then it's something that's above you, something bigger than you. It's not meant to be something that we just believe like a religion. It's meant to be a science and a practice and something we understand and something we comprehend. That's why my work going way back into as soon as I started practicing has been focused more on teaching. because. It states very clearly in the Vedic astrology texts that people are supposed to have a knowledge of Jyotish. You're supposed to understand it. doesn't mean everybody's supposed to be an astrologer. It means everyone's supposed to have a knowledge of Jyotish, a knowledge of the light, which implies a knowledge of karma, a knowledge of what the planets are, what the universe is, how all of this is laid out. We're literally for the Brahmins or for the educated people, if you're educated, you need to be educated about this stuff. And now we're educated, but we're not educated about stuff that's important. We're educated about making money, get a career, do this. That's fine. They were educated about that too. But first education is who are you? Why are you here? What is karma? What is the universe? What does the, how does the soul descend from the non-dual state to the dual state through, uh, you know, based on karma, based on the energetics of the cosmos? What is all of that? Yes, it's easy to believe in it, but most people think it's beyond their grasp to actually comprehend it, and it's not. It's within everyone's grasp, just like it's whenever, within everyone's grasp to understand you know, coding or technical engineering. If you want to learn it, you can learn it. So astrology is the same way. That's why I focus on teaching more than anything. Long answer. <laughs> so so share your thoughts about that. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's perfectly the way it, it should be done, that um, there should be a base of the... Vedic tradition or the law of karma or the principles of spirituality on which you can build Jyotish. That is that's the way it should go. But the problem is nowadays it happens the other way around. Now people will just learn the zodiac signs. They will learn two two traits. You know, Aries is very fast. Scorpio is very cunning, for example. They think like this. And then they will say, okay, Capricorn are very cold. Then Sagittarius, they boast too much. And then they'll just know some keywords and then by that they will start looking at the horoscopes and they will also do consultations and they will also pretend or they will also think that they also know astrology and they can also help others but uh, if it would be so easy then <laughs> everybody you know would be an astrologer but then and yes there are so many but that's why there are very few people who you feel that once I go to this person I show my chart and then I don't need to go to any other person for the rest of my life. He has exactly told me, he or she, that who I am inside rather than not, you know, when you'll find somebody, a love affair or, you know, because if the internals are clear, then the externals manifest automatically. This is what I have seen. Because most of the times when I do reading, so when I meet friends or I meet people, I see that they have great chance. Some many of the times they have a lot of external things coming to them, but their habits are so bad that they cannot save any money. They are into addictions, they are into bad habits. So, then if you are not stabilized internally, even if you become the president of the United States or India, <laughs> we know what happens, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, and so, so the the um, the reason people 
see it that way is because we see everything that way. We see everything as, and it's, and it's perfectly fine because we're very worldly and we see everything as a benefit. Like what can it, what can it give me? How can it help me? And so of course they're like, well, of course that's what astrology is. What everything is, it's a way to help us be live a happier life and do this. And it works on that level and it's fantastic. And that's always the first hook of pretty much anything is how is it going to help me? And Oh, this is something that can help me. So I'm attracted to that. And that's perfectly fine. Yes. And astrology is one of the best things to get people interested. Um, the reason that people think that's all it's good for, frankly, is because exactly. they, they constantly run into astrologers and astrology teachers who tell them that's all it's good for. Because with myself, I, and I'm not saying you, by the way, but I'm saying people think that because that's what, they're, that's what they've been told. Exactly. Um, and when people, or they've been told that, well, you can't really learn it. You have to go to an astrologer and they'll do readings. It's really complicated. It's too hard to learn. So there are people that have a chart which shows that they're gifted enough to learn it. See, I throw all that out the window, by the way. I'm like, I don't think any of that's true. I think the reason people don't believe that they're meant to learn it, because this is my, 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 my point of view is, is none of that's true. Everybody not only can learn it, but should learn it. We're here to know it, not to just benefit from the, you know, it's like, for example, someone is good with money. Like you can learn how to be good with money. You can learn as a system. You can learn how to do it, right? And learn how to accumulate wealth. And then once you learn that skill, it's going to benefit everything in your life because now you're going to have more resources. One of the benefits is you'll have nice stuff. Okay, you can look at astrology the same way. Learning astrology is learning how the universe works, learning how you are an embodiment of the universe. And you can, once you learn that, it's going to benefit everything in your life. It's going to benefit your relationships. It's going to benefit your work because now you're connected with your cosmic source and you're meant to be. It's not just something that's reserved for the elite few who can somehow grasp it. Because frankly, a lot of them as well, they're not doing astrology because they're so incredibly gifted and aligned. Many of them, you just said it and it's true. And I'm not trying to insult anyone because I think people are helping others in an amazing way all across the board. But sometimes they have this much expertise of astrology and this much expertise as an entrepreneur or something else that allows them to be successful. And that's fine too. That's their karma and they're not hurting anybody. But there's a whole lot of different skills that come into play that allow someone to make a living doing astrology as opposed to reading charts correctly and really understanding the science. They're actually very different things. Does that make sense? Correct. Perfect. So the point is what I'm saying is that the reason people see it that way is because that's what they're told. That's what they think. And so, again, you know, my whole thing for since I really started and really started examining the texts back before I even did it professionally or even thought about it was that this is what we're supposed to learn. It says it right at the beginning of Briyat Parashra Horasastra, the Brahmins should have a knowledge of Jyotish. And what they're calling Brahmins are educated people. And in this day and age, we're all Brahmins in that sense. And I'm not talking about the technical cast of Brahmins that are still the Brahmin families that are still, you know, involved in India. But I'm talking about what they referred to as Brahmins back then, which were educated people. The people who were educated about what life is, for those people, a knowledge of Jyotish is necessary. Otherwise, it says you, you'll go to the hell called Ralrava and be reborn blind. That's what it says. For the Brahmins who don't learn Jyotish or who misuse it, your life will suck, basically, <laughs> because it's better to not have an answer and to not be educated than it is to be educated in the wrong way. Correct. And now, again, like I said before, we're educated about many of the wrong things. It's not like the education we get is useless. It's just very incomplete. But what happens also is that we all have this worldview based on this education. We think we know. We think we got some idea. And somehow then Jyotish or Vedic astrology fits into that already existing worldview 
that says, well, I'm here to be happy and have money and live and try not to die. That's what I'm here to do. And Vedic astrology can help me somehow. How? <laughs> and they're missing all of that context. <laughs> because they're Brahmins in the ancient sense. They've been educated about the nature of the world. But the education is very limited. And it's like they're, it's like they're blind. Again, they're very important statements in those texts that give us a great indication. And again, why does it say we're blind? Well, it says we're blind because Jyotish is the science of light. Exactly. If you're not getting the light, you're blind. <laughs> so that's why I really focus on educating, first educating people about things like this, like, wait a minute, you're supposed to know this, not just believe it, not just have people tell you stuff that's going to maybe benefit your worldly life. This is a body of knowledge. It's a Vedanga. Yes. That it's, it's a divine um, teaching that connects you to the divine source. That's very different than the other stuff that we learn in school that can help us live a happy life or do something that's very beneficial or that we're interested in. The Vedangas, Ayurved, Jyotish, of course, yoga, even things like Hasta Samudrika and, um, you know, Vastu, these are divine sciences that connect us to the source of energy itself, the source of wisdom itself. So, and we're all meant to know it. So that's why I really, that's why my focus has always been on teaching. I actually like doing readings. It's fun. It's, it's fun to help people. <laughs> it's very true. Whatever you said is to the point. <laughs> and so, you know, one of the things we talked about that I would, um, that I would discuss here is okay if I share my screen. Yeah, perfectly. I was very Great. interested to see what was there, but because time was less, I couldn't see. <laughs> yeah, right. So you can see my screen here. Perfect. Yeah, and um, I have a. We'll post a link in the, under the video, under the YouTube video, to um, to this, so people can download it. First of all, you see there's a link to my channel. If people want to subscribe, you can just click that link, which will also be there. Um, but. This is about, this was actually the manual from a um, weekend course that I recently taught on planetary transits, planets moving through the sky. So, Babajit and I, we spoke about, um, you know, talking about Gandanta and different transits and Jupiter just turned retrograde to talk about things like that. I thought it would be interesting, though, to also just sort of talk about things in a larger context as well. Um, and so just have this manual I'll read through some of this and especially really to understand some of the especially the astronomical perspective of life on earth and things like that um it's pretty amazing so as you see it says here tracking planetary movements through the skies perhaps the most foundational timing or predictive system and method in all of astrology it's universal to all systems in fact it transcends zodiacs and many issues that hang astrologers up one of the reasons astrologers say that both zodiacs work is because of the transits, because they're, that's a universal framework. They're influencing each other regardless of what signs are behind the zodiac or whatnot. So this was, you know, again, this was from a course that I did that taught my students how to read a zodiac and how to make predictions based on a natal chart and then planets moving in the sky and hitting those sensitive points um, in the chart. So more specifically, as it relates to making predictions using transits, when the planets in the sky line up with the planets in a natal chart, things happen. It's guaranteed. So the amazing thing about Vedic astrology is the added power of the dasha cycles. So when we combine the planetary dasha cycles with the transits where the planets are in the sky, enormous specificity is possible. In fact, when you understand it correctly, it's a very much a sort of lockdown predictive system. It makes all predictions extremely clear. Um, in effect, Western astrology and non-Vedic systems have been just relying on transits to make predictions for, you know, a thousand years. And Vedic astrology also uses transits, but it also dials it in with the dashas, which makes it so predictive. So, this is how astrologers can know with 100% certainty what's going to happen in someone's life. 
So to clarify, it doesn't mean that we can predict with 100% accuracy that a certain person will take a specific action because there's always an element of chance and what might be called free will in that equation. But you can know with 100% certainty the issues that's going to come up for the person, what they'll be dealing with, and this is in each person's mind. The thing to understand is that's really what astrology is doing. Especially when you start to dial in Vedic astrology, again, we're talking about an Indian practice, and karma is what we're dealing with, okay? The planets are the agents of karma, and karma is in the mind. So this is why what you're doing when you're reading the chart on any level, whether it's dashas, the natal chart, planets moving through the sky, is you're reading the karmas coming into the person's mind. Karma is literally on the level of the mind first, and it comes into the mind based on our past actions. So we've all heard that karma means action, and it does, but it's effective to realize how the process of karma works. Your past actions over lifetimes create the deep tendencies you have to see things a certain way. So stated more simply, it creates your mind. So your mind is a collection of time from this life and from past lives. So all of that is the karmic tendencies that you bring into life situations. And those tendencies shape your reality and create an identity, false identity, called an ego. So you think you are this person because of all of these actions you've taken through all these past lives, how that gives you a certain idea about what you think is happening now and how you're likely to react and to respond based on that. And that's what astrology is looking at. We're looking at a range of possibility because but based on your tendencies, which are shown in the chart. And those tendencies are based on your mind and your samskaras. So you want to understand something as well, that the natal chart shows a range of possibility that was established at birth. And, it's, and it, just level, it just penetrates to the level of the mind, not to the level of the actions you're going to take in this lifetime. The actions you take in this lifetime are going to be creating new cycles of karma, new samskaras that you take into the future. So the natal chart shows those tendencies or what are called samskaras that come from the planets and from the universal cosmic energy itself. So that's literally what astrology is first showing. It's showing your karmic tendencies based on all your past lives and the likely course of action that you might take now based on all of those astrological factors.